Y'all remember this? I got him stalking me, y'all. I gotta put my gun out now. Mm-hmm. I caught that nigga at my house the other day. I heard his engine. I said, hmm. I opened my window. And oh my God, he must know me so well. Because guess what? I was sent for you when I want you to come. You came when I needed you to come. When I needed you to come, you came exactly where the fuck I needed you to be at. <laughs> so all, all the people that said, oh, she doing little. <laughs> guess what, bitch? It works. Oh, if if y'all want a little spell cast, call me, hit me up, inbox me. I told you, you wanna play with me, I'ma play with you. Now you're my fucking puppet. Now you can do a dancey dance for everybody. And y'all can watch. Oh my god. What the okay. See, so see? I need my blanket for this. I don't, I don't know. I just don't know. Okay, so y'all, today we're making a video about black magic voodoo spell story times. Voodoo spell story time. Let's hop into it. One day my uncle had met this fine woman. So, you know, he had to slide on, you know, trying to get her digits and stuff like that. So they started dating and they was feeling each other. One day she invited him over for dinner and, you know, he went. But well, while he was in her other room watching TV, she was stirring up her favorite dish. A famous spaghetti. But this wasn't just any spaghetti. The sauce had period in it. And she did a ritual slash spell. Monk was not paying attention to the surroundings. He went and ate it. Then they carried on the conversations, watched a little TV, and went to bed that night. He said while he was sleeping, he had these demonic nightmares. But that wasn't just the crazy part. When he woke up in the morning, he stepped foot on the ground. He had a white substance at the bottom. Demonic nightmares. I've seen, I'm going to show y'all another video where somebody else is saying the same thing. He, you start having dreams where the part, you, you just start having very weird nightmares when you're sleeping with this person. It's at the bottom of his feet. Come to find out, it was salt. But it wasn't just a pinch of salt. It was a ring of salt around the entire bed. So my uncle shrugged it off and he continued to date the shorty. I don't know why you would shrug this off though. As time passed, he became more and more obsessive about this woman. To the point where he neglected his family, you very seldomly heard from him. He was off the grid. And they dated for years. And she made that spaghetti weekly. Well, eventually, the lady ended up going through menopause. And she couldn't make the spaghetti like she used to anymore. So after a while, my uncle became continuously angry, upset. And with her not being able to do the spells that she used to, it would lead to her demise. One day while they was having dinner... He finally snapped. He took a double barrel shotgun at point blank range to her face and went on to serve a very long prison sentence. My mama to this day told me to never eat a woman's spaghetti. And I firmly believe in this to this day. Based on a true story, that is crazy. He literally just said the same thing this dude was just saying. He posted this video 18 hours ago. I just found this. You know, we used to hang out. We used to hang out all the time. You know, we used to, you know, go chill. You know what I mean? Hook up, things like that. She used to love to bake. You know, I'm greedy, so I would always go to the crib and chill. But uh, I started noticing every time she would spend the night at my house, oh, I would be at her house. I would have these real, like, weird, like, invasive, demonic-ass dreams and Mind you, this was like three, four years ago, and I still remember this particular dream. It was this one dream I had in her crib when um when I was pulling out these hooks. Like I had hooks all in me, like all throughout my whole body, and I was removing like these like fishing hooks out of me. And like <clears throat> the lines was like leading back to this particular female in the dream. You know what I'm saying? So I had all these hooks in me that led back to this this particular this particular female in, in the dream. And I so you tell, and this is what I'm saying. People don't be taking dreams seriously. Like it's a serious thing. If you are not like consciously aware of what's going on around you, your dreams are gonna let you know. Just like you have nightmares or dreams about, you know, yourself or something that you need to fix in your life. Your dreams are gonna let you know what's going on around you also. If there's some negative entity, if there's some negative presence. Like I said before, when I went to went to go over to sleep at a house that I was babysitting and I had really bad dreams in that house. It's the same thing. Pay attention to your dreams. It's very important. I remember that sketch me out. That dream to this day sketched me out so bad. So um, one day I'm chilling with her, and uh, she has to go to work, and she leaves me. Uh, she leaves me at her crib. So me being the nose 
fucking than I am. I'm saying, I, I start rummaging through her shit trying to figure out what type of person she really is, like what she really into. But you never really know somebody until, you know, you be at their crib and, you know, you find out what type of they be into, you feel me? So in her closet, she had this, um, and she used to have this, like, wooden floor. So in her closet, I, I, you know, I was trying to rummage through it and shit, and I kind of noticed that, um, one of the boards, the floorboards, wasn't flush. Like, it was kind of sticking up, you know, kind of sticking up a little higher than the rest of them. So I lift that shit up, and she got, like, a, a little box underneath the floor. So when I go in the box, I, open, I pull the box up, I go hit the box, surely got all these, uh, weird notes and weird-ass herbs and spices and a uh, fucking, uh, uh, a pig. That I had lost with my hair in it, all type of goofy bear shit, right? So I started going through the um the notes that she got all these notes with like incantations and like rituals or something like how to do rituals, instructions and goals pertaining to me and all that, right? So I'm like, oh nah, shorty is weird, yo. Like she is, she's bugged out. So I confront, I confronts the she tried to deny it, this, that, and the third. So I hit her with the with the proof. I'm like, yo, what's these notes in? Explain yourself, what's this? Why you got my pick with my hair? And all this other shit. So she admits, you know, like, no, I'm in the wicker and I was trying to, I was trying to get you to commit because I, you know, I just wanted to help you commit to me, yo. So long story short, yo, when you get on with somebody, yo, don't never leave no personal effects at the house. Don't let them, don't let them do your hair unless you get your hair back. Yo, it's just a weird world. So just be careful out there, man. This is just a story time of how I found out my ex-boyfriend and his family were doing witchcraft on me. So I found out, I was very, uh, first of all, I made a new TikTok and like tarot readers came up. And that's the first time I ever heard about tarot cards, anything. It was like God sent that to me so I could wake the fuck up because I had no idea what was going on around me. So when I started listening more and more, um, stuff started to click for me. Like they were like, be careful what you're saying to your significant other during, during like intimate times. And I was like, holy crap. I remember like now I see why he wanted me to say those things and things like that. And then it just like got deeper and deeper and deeper. And I'm like, holy crap, this is everything my life has been for like a while. And then I remembered one time that we gave our clothes to his his mom and his aunt to wash our clothes because we didn't have a washer and dryer in my apartment complex that I was paying for. He didn't pay for shit. Um, for the people who thought he was paying for something, he paid for the last month of rent and then financially abused me and told me that I need to pay him back for that even though he was living rent free. We gave them our clothes to wash and tell me why I go through our clothes and I'm looking at him I'm like, where the fuck are my period panties? Where are my period panties? So his aunt and his mom and whoever else took my panties. My period panties because they have trust blood the in them. Family. And, and my hair. I want y'all to catch that because it says I woke up one day with my wig pulled back and my hair was cut. Like they were taking my hair to do God knows what. You got to be careful. We got another one. So, so um... Yeah, so my first thing he wanted to cook, I'm thinking, oh, okay, that's like, that's awesome. I love a man that can cook. Da -da -da -da. Um, one red flag was he wanted to cook me like a sausage thing and a red sauce, and I don't eat red sauce. But I didn't think nothing of it because I live in Louisiana, and a lot of people eat red sauce. So another flag that I ignored was um, when I, the first time I met his mom, they had like a living room and then in when she went into the living room there was like a den with a sofa in it and she was like laying in the den before i can really like make out her face but when i first glanced into the room she looked demonic like the first thing i saw looked demon like but i ignored it like i was like you know, it's dark in here. She's a darker complexed woman. My eyes need to adjust to the lack of light because it goes from like sunlight in the living room to like just pitch black in the den. So it was like nothing. So I'm thinking I, I talked myself out of seeing what my spirit guides were trying to show me already. Let all the red flags I saw be known first before I get into like what the fuck started happening from there.
<laughs> it got crazy. Let's just say I now have a permanent restraining order on him. And you know how rare it is for a judge to grant a permanent restraining order against somebody? There was like a rumor in their hometown that their mom does voodoo. His My, my ex-husband's mom. And I was like... I've never seen any signs of her doing such things in the house. Mm -hmm. So, I went on a mission. <laughs> I was like, on the cool, I was like digging through stuff in the house or like searching for stuff in the house. But like, I had I couldn't let it be known, you know. And then she puts on such a good front of like, I'm a Christian woman type thing, you know. Like, yeah. we love God in this house type deal. So I went in the, the children's room. I went in the closet. There was like a wall in the closet that had all kinds of writing on it. And it was like indistinguishable writing. I couldn't make out what it was. It was like from top to bottom, writing on top of writing on top of writing. I started to realize that every time he would fight me and I was like, I'm done. I don't want to be with you no more. Go back to your mama house. I, you know, whatever, whatever. His mom would fix me a plate of food and try to feed me. And it would always be like something with like some greens in it or like red beans and rice. Like food that you got to like smother and cook down. See where I'm going with this? So it had got to a point where when she would fix me a plate of food, I refused to eat it. And I started to realize it would like piss her off. You need to eat. I already fixed your food. Don't worry. Like, what are you fixing my food for? I'm a grown ass woman. Like, you don't have to fix my food. But that's what it was. We would argue. We would fight. He would tell his mom he wanted me to act a certain way or he wanted me to be it, he didn't want me to leave him so she would try to fix food and make me eat it and put whatever she needed herbs she needed to put in it to make me stay because i started realizing when i stopped eating her food i stopped looking at him in the light that i was viewing him in as far as being so just head over heels in love with him when i would eat her food it was like the colors were brighter it was like i just i just loved him so much that i just really wanted to work it out when i stopped eating her food is when i realized he ain't it she ain't the whole family ain't Right? Um, the trees are just as dull here as they are in any other city, any other town around here. Like, that's when I started realizing, okay, this is it. Also, when I would eat her food, not only would I take him back and forgive him, but I would get really horrible period cramps. Horrible. Ooh. Like, back pain. There was also an instance where his mom was on this kick, like... There's about to be no more small children in this house. I really want small children in this house again. Y'all need to give me a grandbaby. I want another grandbaby. Da, 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 da. And I'm looking like, lady, your son is f***ing crazy. I'm trying to figure out my escape plan right the f*** now. What do you mean you want a baby? Like, what are you talking about? For a week straight, this woman would fix my food and bring it to me. And I would just, like, I would pretend to eat it. And when she would, like, walk away, I would throw it out. Because I was like, she trying to give me something to make me pregnant for this man. And I'm not trying to be stuck with this man. I'm already working on my escape plan. Like, what the fuck is you talking about? So, now, fast forward. Um, keep in mind, we're already, like, married and stuff at this point. So fast forward, um, girl. it's like little things started. I guess he didn't realize that in binding me to him, he also was binding himself because he can't be faithful to save his life. Like I've heard every story in the book after the fact about him cheating on all his girlfriends, da, 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 da. but in binding him to me or in trying to bind me to him, whatever, whichever way you want to think about it. He also like binded his own free will in a way because he knows he wants to go out and be a, but for some reason he can't. So he's constantly fighting his self and he's constantly like arguing with his self and he's constantly like, dishing stuff out at me as if it's my fault now one thing i did think about also could have been a red flag when we first met 
he told me he was showing pictures of me to his mom back before we were even like a thing he was like yeah when i first um started talking to you on the phone i was like showing my mom your instagram and she thought you were just so beautiful and da -da 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 and all this stuff and he would just always tell me like stuff like that and now when i think about it it's like why was you showing me to this old woman because you was trying to get her to do workings to bring us together that's what it was like now that i'm thinking about it now fast forward i do my own self work to get away from him this story goes all the way up to part 10 she's basically explaining how she got away from him with the divorce process moving out blah blah blah, blah. but then she got in contact with the healer and the healer was telling her that yes this old lady is doing root work on you she's doing dark magic on you and best believe that she's even going to be now more angrier that you broke her son's heart you know so to say so you need to be careful and then this is what she's saying now the my reader um my healer also told me that the that she had already put like some type of concoction down in front of my apartment right now what was strange about that was like the day before i spoke to my healer my roommate called us all to the front door and was like there's this white powder on our doormat oh, Lord. we don't know where the f it came from we didn't know what the f it was we didn't touch it but we were like what the hell is that so my healer brought that up mind you this lady is over the phone she does not fucking know me she was like she's already been in your apartment she's already put down whatever she needs to put down i need you to throw away that doormat i'm like oh she was like throw away the doormat whatever it is she put it in the doormat under the doormat you need to throw it away put on some gloves walk that shit to the nearest dumpster outside do not bring that shit in your fucking house get rid of it so that's what we did i started eating more i got my appetite back i started being able to sleep um and i haven't had any issues with it since exactly so that's what i'm saying i the i made this video so people can be more aware about what's going on as far as like family members relationships friends all of that type of stuff is like actually real and sometimes these um these magic doctors these voodoo doctors these these spiritual doctors they sometimes you know how to they know how to play magic tricks but i just want you to listen to this story you might you know it might be real but she, what she's saying is she experienced it and it was it felt real for her when i went to a doctor, 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 doctor you call it, but my sister um took me to this like guy the seer this was it was intense there's like loads of people like mm -hmm. waiting for him so yeah me and patricia went and there was like people coming out and he had like bite marks on them there was like people <gasps> running out thank you running out of this like tent screaming um and like being like there's a snake there's a snake it was like crazy i'm like 17 um i'm like okay come what on hell? you know like she had a belief that there was like um a curse in the family and that somebody had put a curse on us um, and we weren't going to find love, and they didn't want to be successful, and they didn't want this, so she took me to the doctor. We get this, whatever, this case out, so we go to the, the doctor, and got to give him, like, money. Got to give him, obviously, <laughs> speaking in tongues, his eyes are, like, rolling back, and um, brother in law and my sister are, like, blowing on my feet. So they're, like, <laughs> on my feet. And the guy is, like, <laughs> the guy is, like, pulling out, like, pulling my skin, pulling my stomach, and I'm, like, ah! And then this like ball comes out of my stomach, hair all over it. I don't even know. I don't know how, I don't, can't explain it. Don't know what, how he did it. He's but a I was like looking around the room like, but this is a fucking tent. Yeah. It was like, it wasn't even a tent. It was like, you know, just like sticks and things. Didn't make any sense. <laughs> Wait, what did it look like? <laughs> like a, a woodeny, like, and it had like red on it. And it had like hair, like hair on it. That looked like an urchin. Ew! It was sore. It was sore. Mm -hmm. To me, it felt like he was just pulling my skin. How, how did he get that out? I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know, but... Do you... What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> but he said he got rid of the care, so that's why... Wait, what happened to your sister? And, like, that's what I be saying when people be holding stuff in and it manifests into a sickness or whatever curses or whatever dark magic or black... You know, anything that's, like, not in the best benefit of you that's inside of you... It'll manifest, and some of these doctors 
can help bring that out. But some of them be faking and they'll just be like, oh yes, you have something in you. And then they'll put all this whole fake facade. So you got to make sure you use your discernment on finding the healers that you trust and what works for you. But, <clears throat> you know, just be safe out there, y'all. Because just like there are a lot of fake weird people out here, there are a lot of fake weird doctors, even in the healthcare field, you know, you know what's been going on, the shady stuff that's been going on in the matrix. But it's the same thing with spirituality. Some people are actually like saying you have this and you really don't have it. And then they take your money and it just... It, you know, it, it you really didn't have anything and you just wasted your time. I know that a lot of us are getting stronger and more aware into our spiritual awakenings. And a lot of people who have been doing this and, you know, scamming and take people's money and doing all these fake magical things that really is just magicians. Like you go see a show. Um, it's the same, like, I just really wanted to show this side of spirituality. I just really wanted to show this side of spirituality so people could be more aware and bring more awareness to, like, you know, sometimes you're physically attacked and then sometimes you're spiritually attacked and you have to understand, you know, the right people who are around. You can pick up on the things, pay attention to your dreams, pay attention to what you feel, pay attention to everything that you eat and the energy that you're around your body your mind your spirit guides your dreams you will it will let you know and be careful of these people who claim to help you and they don't and you know they're actually harming so you have to be careful and sometimes the men who are closer to their mother who know all those spells and stuff like that she'll put a spell on you just to make you feel more closer and strongly emotional towards him like, you know, you just got to be aware. And that's the whole reason why I made this video. So I hope y'all have a good rest of y'all day. I hope this brought a little clarity or, you know, just informing you about things that's going around because it's going to be a lot of, I know a lot of people are waking up and they're going to start getting more in, introduced to certain spiritual practices. So you just have to make sure that you are taking care of yourself. Um, I love y'all. Let me know in the comments. Um, what other videos y'all want me to go over to? Because I want to make sure that, you know, we all, I'm going to do my investigations like I normally do. But y'all stay dangerous.